And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of E-Electric Productions. I'm Jay, and today we're going to be taking a look at two recent titans of the top-down shooter genre. I'm speaking, of course, of Ruiner and Redeemer. Titles aside, these games were made to match up against one another, and we're going to be taking a look how they stand on their own merit, and finally throw them in the ring to see how they hold up against one another. So without further ado, roll intro. So we're going to start off with just the titles here. We have Ruiner versus Redeemer. A Ruiner is to take something that is worth value and to make it worthless or without value. A Redeemer is to take something that is valueless or without worth and to restore said worth and to bring back the value that has been taken away. These two titles are the perfect yin to each other's yang and set up perfectly the dichotomy that we're trying to explore here, which is one game versus another game. These games were made to be compared and contrasted, so without further ado, let's dive right in and take a look at these two games and how they compete against one another. The first game we're going to take a look at is Ruiner. Now, Ruiner is the latest of the two games to come out. It just came out when this video was made the day prior, and I have to say I've been playing quite a bit of it during that time frame. I've already streamed the game twice, done a single playthrough myself, and then done another playthrough for capture for this review. And I'm not getting tired of the game at all. I'm really, really enjoying it. It's completely captured me, and I find myself looking forward to playing it again, given any excuse whatsoever. The game is definitely a top-down shooter in every sense of the word. However, stylistically, it goes above and beyond what most top-down shooters provide. The game is drenched in style, and every kill, every action, every movement in the game feels like a mixture of the Matrix mixed with your favorite anime, and the game plays as smoothly as it looks. I've never once died in the game feeling like it was my fault. I've never died feeling like it was the controls and adequacies that led me there. Every time I die, I know what I did wrong or what I could have done better. That's not to say that the game is not super chaotic and is going to lead to your deaths many, many, many times. In this way, the game is not dissimilar from Hotline Miami. Although, while I felt in Hotline Miami there was more luck involved, in this game I do feel that there is more tactics and strategy, and that if you plan your moves correctly, your deaths can be much more minimized than the aforementioned title. This game does an excellent job of sucking you into its world, and while the game may not have the deepest and richest of stories, the game's combat and world will continue to draw you back time and time again. You start off the game knowing little of what's going on, dropped into a glorified tutorial that takes you through a small level and fighting a boss that you may find to be more difficult than expected, given that it is quote-unquote just the tutorial boss. However, this quickly gives way to the game's minimalistic story and to the small open-world hub that you can explore in between missions. I won't go into the story in any detail here, as I don't want to ruin it for anybody who may be interested in buying and playing the game, but needless to say, you're double-crossed at the beginning of the game and awaken to find yourself in even more of a confusing situation. All you know is that you're looking for your brother who's been kidnapped, and that will lead you to different areas and different combat scenarios in the game. Now, while the story may be simplistic, the combat, augmentations, variety of weapons, melee, and ranged, I'll give you a great amount of complexity to play around with and hone. I found myself switching back and forth from thoroughly enjoying the melee and then the ranged combat until I finally found a healthy mixture of both that worked for me. My first couple of times playing the game while streaming or just playing on my own free time saw me dying far more than I felt that I should be. But after only four or five sessions of play, I found that I was quickly becoming better and better at the game and went from regularly getting rankings of C and D to getting rankings of A and S+. However, the desire for repeat playthroughs is definitely there and will bring you back again and again simply trying to beat the game with a better overall ranking and score. One of the things that I thoroughly enjoyed about the game was the variety of long-range weapons. And while I personally found the shotgun-type weapons to be my absolute favorites, I found some of the long-ranged weapons and the flamethrower to be a lot of fun to play around with. People that go into this game thinking that it's merely another hack and slash and try to play it as such will find themselves gravely disappointed and frustrated, as this game requires quite a bit of tactics and strategy. The augmentations in the game, of which there are many, need to be chosen from and then upgraded. As such, my playthrough may heavily differ from your playthrough. I personally chose a route that included upgraded sprint mechanics, regenerating health, a placeable energy shield, and a few others. 
One of the things that surprised me in the game was the fact that cover became much more useful than I anticipated when I first started. While there's no cover-based shooting, you will find that you'll use cover quite a bit to position yourself away from the enemies, allow them to come to you, and then take them out one by one. Running out into the very middle of an open area and presenting yourself for all the enemies to take shots at at once leads to a much more challenging game. It's doable, but extremely difficult if you don't want to be taking damage. One of the bugs that I did notice in the game is the enemy AI. The enemy AI has a tendency to get caught up on the terrain and stay there for much longer than I would have anticipated, seemingly confused and unable to work out how to get around said vehicle or whatever object they've gotten stuck on. It wasn't a big deal and it didn't really affect my enjoyment of the game, however I did find myself at times being tempted to manipulate the AI into getting stuck on the terrain so that I could pick them off a little bit more easily. The same is true for the bosses, one boss in particular I was having trouble with until he got stuck on a box at which point I was able to pretty much just take pot shots at him and work his health down till I could get in close and finish him off with my melee. I want to reiterate, this is not game breaking, nor did it ruin the game for me, and the boss getting stuck only occurred once out of the four or five playthroughs that I've done, so I really don't feel it was a big deal, however, it was worth mentioning. Another oddity in the game that I don't know if it's a bug or a design choice are some of the explosive barrels. Particularly, if you shoot these explosive barrels, they fly towards your character even if you were shooting them away from yourself. They will come flying at you and explode with fiery vengeance, sometimes consuming up to half your health. Now, again, I'm not sure if this was a design choice or a bug as you can manipulate this sometimes to fly towards enemies too, but I found it to be rather annoying. Another small issue that I had with the game was the traps. The traps in the game are single hit kills, and while this may not seem like that big of a deal, the pace of the game is rather quick. It has you dashing from point to point, quickly looking for the next group of enemies to take on. However, the traps lead you to a more pensive playstyle. I was constantly looking for these traps that had almost invisible laser trip wires, and every time I felt like I was getting into a good groove, I'd inadvertently trigger one of these traps and kill myself. Now, death in the game's not that big of a deal as you simply die and respawn. Again, not too dissimilar from Hotline Miami. However, it does break your flow, and you may lose a weapon that you were utilizing that you really liked. I would have either liked to have seen the traps not be a one-hit kill, or have the laser trip mines shine a little bit brighter so that they could be spotted a little easier. I know that seems to go against the idea of what a trap is, however, since you move along at such a quick pace in this game, even a brighter tripwire would still be hard to notice unless you were paying close attention. All in all though, this is just another nitpick. Another thing that I enjoyed about the game very much was the art style. While the graphics in Ruiner are nothing to write home about, the art style is the exact opposite. The world is drenched in a Neo-Tokyo art style that is absolutely gorgeous, and I found myself looking forward to every new area that was introduced just so that I could drink in the gorgeous world. The graphics on the other hand are nothing to write home about, and this is especially noticeable whenever the game zooms in on any of the characters. The characters are poorly rendered and blocky looking, very unlifelike and plasticine. This could have been an artistic choice as the game seems to be channeling its inner Blade Runner, but nevertheless I found the graphics to be lackluster, and the farther back the game was, the better it looked. With it being such a fast-paced game, you don't have much time to pay attention to the graphics, and as I've already stated, the art style more than makes up for any graphical lackluster. The music and sound in the game are both excellent, complementing the world that's been created here, and while there's no real voice acting to speak of, the weapon sounds and game music all came across top-notch. As far as longevity goes, the game can be beat in a few hours. But again, this is the kind of game that you'll be playing through over and over and over, always trying to better yourself and do better than your last playthrough. I know for a fact that I will be playing this game for years to come, if nothing else just for the winning combat mechanics and the joyous freedom and ecstasy that come with whipping through crowds of enemies and taking them down in stylistic manners, picking weapons up that the enemies drop before they can even hit the ground, only to take out his companion who just ran up beside him. Moving to the game's hub world, while I appreciated that they included this in the game, it's nothing too exciting. It's well designed and beautiful to walk through, but there's not much to it, and after you've moved through it once or twice, you'll pretty much have an idea of what it has to offer and simply run from point A to point B trying to get done your next mission prerequisites. There are some funny things that you can come across and some interesting conversations that you can have with the locals. One of the activities will have you hacking cats. Yes, as in live felines. It's interesting, and I won't ruin it for you now, but the wackiness of the mission is only matched by the individual who hands the mission out to you. There's not a lot else to say about Ruiner. On paper, it looks simple. Playing it, though, is a completely different story. It will absolutely suck you in. You're going to want to know what's coming next, what weapon is going to drop, what the next well-made boss will look like. 
And speaking of bosses, while I didn't find them to be cheap, there was one boss in particular who had a special move of raining down fire that I found to be a bit annoying. The game doles out karma to you, and this karma can be used for the upgrades to your character. It drops at a fairly steady rate and can be received from chests throughout the game world, defeating enemies, fighting bosses, or pretty much anything else. There's also side quests and side missions that can be completed, however please don't expect them to be fleshed out and detailed like you might find in some other games. They're simply there to pad out the runtime and give you something else to do, but I found them to be a welcome addition, never a chore, and fun to complete. One of the other features of the game is after you've defeated a large group of enemies in an arena type area, a bot will come in that will take all the weapons that are laying around on the ground and turn them into karma. This gives you incentive to use your melee attacks as much as possible and let the weapons that the enemies drop lay on the ground so that they can be turned into karma at the end of the fight. I usually won a 50-50 route with this trying to leave at least half the weapons that fell on the ground and the other half I would pick up and enjoy in combat. It's the little things in this game that really make it come together and lets you know just how much love, attention, and detail the devs put into it. Little additions like the weapon caches in the game that you need to hack into, and the fact that there's randomly dropped, upgraded weapons in the game, constantly led to the game having a rich and detailed feel. Overall, as a regularly disappointed top-down shooter fan, I have to say that this game itched a scratch that had not been itched properly in a long time. Although, with it being a Devolver Digital game, I can't say that I'm totally shocked or surprised. Devolver Digital has very rarely, if ever, disappointed me with their past titles. On a scale of 1 to 10, I would rate this a solid 8.5. There's not a whole lot that I don't like about it, and while there's a few nitpicks here and there that I think could be smoothed out, those all easily could be patched. This is the kind of game where if they released DLC, I would buy it in a heartbeat, as the core game has already surpassed all my expectation and more than felt it was worth the money. I'm not gonna lie, Redeemer's gonna have a hard fight here if it hopes to come close to touching this game in my eyes. But let's switch gears and see just how well Redeemer did. Now I need to start off right away by saying this, Redeemer is a great game, it really is, and it's well worth your time, effort, and money. Whatever I do here, I do not want to come across saying anything different than that, so I will preface it as such. Again, Redeemer is a great game and worth your money and time, and depending on what type of twin stick shooter you prefer, it may be the clear victor for you. With that being said, my time with Redeemer was not as much fun as my time with Ruiner and I regularly found myself wishing to go back to the latter game. So what kind of a game is Redeemer? Redeemer is another twin-stick shooter that has a much more simplistic feel to it, even though it's not necessarily a simplistic game. As silly as it sounds, this game reminded me a little bit of a Metal Gear Solid meets God of War. I know that must sound absolutely absurd, but something about the protagonist's manner and facial hair, mixed with the level design and the way the enemies interact, all led me to feel that I was playing a top-down twin-stick amalgamation of those two games. Now that's not a bad thing. God of War and Metal Gear Solid are both touted as excellent game series. And if your game feels like a mixture of the two of those, well, that sounds like a great thing. And in some ways it is. I found that the melee combat in this game is much more hands-on and visceral than that of Ruiner, and the gun combat even feels more punchy and weighty than that of Ruiner. While Ruiner feels more like you're racing around on inline skates, dispatching enemies with white-hot neon lightning, Redeemer, on the other hand, feels more like every encounter is you getting into the ring for a WWE match. And again, that's not a bad thing. In fact, this game has a lot of similarities to a WWE match, with its bombastic combat and characters, heavy hits, throws, grapples, and picking up any and every item around you to use as a weapon at your disposal. There's gruesome finishing moves and dismemberments, hence the God of War feel, taking on larger-than-life enemies in graphic, grappling matches, which actually make it feel like the Earth would be shaking under your feet as you go at it with these titans. And with all that being said, and with all the visceral combat and the weighty feel of punches and blows and shotgun blasts and handguns, I just couldn't help but feel slightly bored. I don't know if it's the slower pace, or that each enemy can take up to a handful of seconds trying to dispatch them. Maybe it was the lack of sprint helping me get from point A to point B just a little bit quicker. Whatever the case, Redeemer constantly seemed to be at war with itself. One minute you'd be blasting through groups of enemies with a shotgun, dispatching them, moving on to the next area in lightning style, and the next moment you'd find yourself out of ammunition, trying to kite enemies back one at a time so you could dispatch them with hand-to-hand -hand combat and hopefully get in a finisher move so that you could regen some of your health. Again, Redeemer is not a bad game, but it feels more like a Nintendo 64-era brawler, with a nice coat of graphical paint and a handful of new small features to help make it feel modern. But at the end of the day, I felt like this was indeed more of a brawler, while I felt Ruiner was more of an action RPG. And maybe that's the point. I think a lot of people would look at these games at face value and say that they don't look dissimilar, when in actuality these games are quite different games. 
Yes, they do have a lot of similarities. You're one guy facing off against waves and waves of waves of enemy, drawn into a world that you didn't ask to be drawn into, and now fighting for your survival and trying to unravel a mystery that's playing out. And yes, they both have melee combat and ranged combat, and you need to be proficient at both if you hope to survive. But while Ruiner feels like the entire game has been sprayed with a can of Pam and lit on fire, Redeemer feels like your character is moving through two feet of mud, and every interaction has a much higher chance of killing you. One of the things I did like about Redeemer was the graphics. I found that it had a higher level of graphical prowess, the characters all had good look and feel, and the opening stage had some very nice features to the world as well. Things like water and bridges and the outdoor environments were pretty to look at, and overall I was very impressed. Now with that being said, Redeemer can't hold a flame to Ruiner when it comes to artistic design. Everything looks same same in this game, and unfortunately once you get done with the initial open area in Redeemer, you quickly head underground and into labs and I found that to be very disappointing as I really liked the opening area and quickly found the game to take a turn towards the drab, but graphically speaking I would say that it's stronger than Ruiner. Artistic representations of load screens or the main character speaking to you the player I found to be rather weak. However, the voice actor for the main character in Redeemer was phenomenal and brought a lot of energy and life to the character. In Redeemer there is no karma system, there is no upgrades, there is no new learned moves. The best that it offers is occasionally picking up new weapons off of enemies. One of the things that I found to be rather frustrating in the game is that I really enjoy the ranged combat. Again, it had a very punchy feel to it and very weighty. Even the lowly pistol in the game felt good to fire. I would love to see another game made by this dev team that was maybe more of a modern tactical twin stick shooter. It would be a day one buy for me. But no matter how good the combat, the voice actor, or the graphical representations of characters and levels, I just couldn't get myself excited about this game. And oddly enough, even though I found myself dying far less in Redeemer than in Ruiner, I found Redeemer to be the harder game. Maybe it's because every time I died I had to start over again, clear that last group of enemies out, and the sense of boredom and tedium set in rather quickly. And I feel bad saying that, I really do, because I constantly found myself feeling like I should be having more fun than I was. And there was moments of genuine fun, as I found myself gleefully dispatching roomfuls of enemies with a mixture of firearms and handheld weapons. The thing here I guess I'm trying to say is, is that when the game feels good, it feels amazing. But most of the time, it just sort of settles into this trudge. And for a game, that's one of the worst defenses that it can have. I'll definitely be playing through and finishing Redeemer, as I got little over halfway through the game. I'll do it because I want to see how the game ends and see how the rather lackluster story concludes. After that though, this game will quickly be relegated to my expansive Steam library that rarely gets touched, only for me to take it out every couple of years to maybe play the arena mode a little bit and enjoy the combat. And sadly, there's not much else for me to say about the game. The graphics are good, but the art style is poor. The voice actor is excellent, and the sound is passable. I can't even remember what the music sounds like, even now after I've only finished playing it a couple of hours ago. The level design, while strong for the first level, I found to be weak and boring the rest of the time, really only there to channel you from one group of enemies to the next and nothing more. The boss encounters were also equally lackluster and not exciting. I know it sounds like I'm coming down pretty hard on this game right now, but please believe me when I say it really is a good game, and I think if I hadn't just gotten done playing Ruiner, it may have left a better taste in my mouth. However, toe-to-toe -to -toe with that game, it clearly comes out below. The game tries its best to add a couple of neat features, like the fact that the only way to regenerate health is through melee kills, adding a bevy of different environmental traps in the game to use against enemies, being able to grab weapons out of enemies' hands and spin them around and use them against them, grabbing torches off the walls to use as melee weapons, being able to rip the arms off of mutants to batter them with, and so on and so forth. And while I appreciated all of these things, and they all helped to make the game feel fleshed out, and like it was created with a lot of love and attention, I'm afraid none of them could save the game from its ultimate fate. And that is, the game simply doesn't know if it wants to be fast-paced or slow, and it's somewhere in the middle. And this leads to constant frustration as you'll get on a roll, only to be stopped dead in your tracks by an enemy that just stubbornly will not go down, and throws off your entire pace for the game. This crisis of identity ultimately just leaves the game feeling well-made but ho-hum. And that's pretty much Redeemer in a nutshell. I would love to go on and say that there's more, but there really isn't. There's no hub world. As I've said before, there's no real upgrade system for your character. There's no in-between for the levels. When you're done one level, you just go down a staircase or through a telepad to the next area. There may be a little bit of story introduced through comic book style cutscenes with good voice acting, but that's pretty much it. After playing the game for almost three hours and getting halfway through it, I never saw anything other than that. 
So that pretty much wraps up my review of Redeemer, a very well-made game with a crisis of identity that leaves me feeling more guilty than anything, as I'm constantly in a war with myself as to why I don't like it more than I do. So how do these two games fare against one another? Well, at this point, I've probably made it fairly obvious which game I favor. Yes, I do like Ruiner better. I like the fast pace, I love the artistic style, I love the Neo Tokyo setting, I love the upgrades in the game, I love little things like the weapon lockers that you have to hack to get a new weapon, I love the comedy in the game, I love the variety of different weapons that you can get, and the randomization of some of the elements of the game. While I find the level designs of Ruiner to be nothing extraordinary, they're hands down better than the level design of Redeemer, which feel completely uninspired and mundane. Ruiner is a game that I will continue to play over and over and over again, with a genuine desire of wanting to get better simply because I enjoy the game so much. If you're looking for a slower paced game where you can kind of move through the levels carefully and stealth kill as much as possible and then try to pull enemies to your location one at a time to pick them off, Redeemer may be the game for you. If you enjoy brawlers more than fast paced arcade shooters, then Redeemer may be the game for you. If you like a weighty and methodical game that falls a little less on the chaotic side, again, you may like Redeemer. However, if you want to play a game that feels like a mixture of Speed Racer and The Matrix, then Ruiner might be your cup of tea. I have felt honored and privileged to get to play both of these games here recently. It seems like there's a constant shortage of good twin-stick shooters, and the fact that I've had two that I get to compare and contrast, and both of them are good games, has been a real pleasure. I would say that if you get the chance, play both of these games so that you can have an informed decision when recommending them to somebody else. But if you can only pick one and you really can't decide between the two, I would have to say go for Ruiner for the best bang for your buck. If you get the chance in the future, give Redeemer a try, or wait till it goes on Steam sale. And to the devs of Redeemer, I would say you've done a phenomenal job making this game. It's a true testament and tribute to your skill, passion, and creativity. And if you ever consider doing another top-down game, I would highly recommend one that's more ranged weapon focused with just a little bit of melee added in for backup support. If you were to make it a modern shooter that felt as weighty and good as this game did, it would absolutely be a day one buy for me. As always, I'm Jay, and I appreciate you guys taking time to watch this video. And if you have any good top-down twin-stick shooters that you could recommend, please let me know in the comment section below. Have a wonderful day, and I look forward to seeing all of you on the next episode of Electric Productions.